Welcome back to Design Connect 21, uh, day two of our awesome talks. I'd like to now welcome our next speakers, Madoda Fani in conversation with Yesha from the Southern Guild. Their topic is art, heritage and culture in Madoda Fani's Ikwekwe collection. We can't wait to be inspired. So over to you guys. Hi, and um, thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Elias Shabanku, and I am the development manager at Southern Guild Gallery. And this is... My name is Mato Otafani um, from Cape Town. I was born and raised in Cape Town. I'm also a part of uh, the artists from Southern Guild Gallery. Wonderful. So I'm not quite sure what you're all seeing but I think we will jump right in. Um, my daughter, please tell us a bit about your background. Okay, um, uh, as I was saying that I was born in Cape Town, uh, I grew up uh, loving art, but didn't go to school as a young age, as a young boy for arts. I only went uh, to college after my matric. So I studied fine arts, which is drawing, painting, uh, ceramics, and, and, and uh, graphic designing. So I, I, I started working professionally, I think in 1999, as a ceramic painter, which I worked for a company for a number of years up until I decided to, to, to start my own business. I think after seven years I worked there. So I started my own business at, in 2009. Okay, and who would you say were your, who did you work with and who influenced um, your body of work? Um, when I started working uh, for the for the for the Photoshop company, uh, there was a lady called Tiffany, and there was a guy called Theo Dundwa, which uh, those guys I looked up to when I started working because also I had, didn't have a clue on what to paint, mm -hmm. so they sort of guide me okay. on what to paint and what colors to use to like combination of colors and all right. that. And the two works that we're looking at right now, who are they by and how did they influence your current body of work? Um, those two works is very interesting when, when I got inspired by those. Uh, remember, I started working in 1999. Uh, in June, I think I started working in June. And then in December, we applied for a, 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 a competition that was in Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. which was going to be in 2000, I think in January. So when the application went through, and then they got a call to say that they want me to go there. So for me, that was shocking. And then I went there, but we went as a group of artists, different uh, artists, like they were dancers, they were guys that were making furniture. And there was just two ceramic artists, which was me and the guy which uh, did the, the teapot, mm -hmm. which is uh, he's a very old man. I think at that time he was about 69. What's his name? Simon Masilo. It's a late summer myself now. He passed away, I think, uh, four years ago. So I remember when we started unpacking mm -hmm. everything that we went to, we were going to sell there. So he started unpacking one pot, one teapot from his from his uh, collection. Yeah. I remember stopping what I was doing, going because also he was old. You know, I went and helped him out, and because also I was so amazed about the texture, the the, the feeling, and the, mm -hmm. the, the, the shapes that he was doing. You know, so I, I think that moment, um, I was inspired by his work. And I remember we shared the room and then he gave me the bed. He said, you go to sleep on the floor because it's too old. So he wants me to live longer. So I think the connection started from there. I connected with him from that, that moment. Okay. And then, and then in your time in working with them, you moved on to, you found a book that inspired you. I found a book uh, that inspired me. It's just that now I forgot the name of the artist, but uh, I lost the book a couple of years ago. What was the book about? It was about insects. It was about uh, insects that were blown up. Mm -hmm. The detail that was so amazing that I could see from the book. Yeah. I didn't even know that fly has got so much detail and so much beauty in it. In color. In color, you know. Yeah. So I think it was when I was working for the Potter shop, because I was doing mostly flowers, mm. you know, inspired by flowers. Yeah. And then I had to move from that work and do something else. Yeah. So the insects, that's when they came through. Okay. Yeah. So as they came through within your next body of work, you were still painting the surfaces. I was still painting the but surfaces. The motif changed. Yeah, I was still painting, but the motif changed. And then also, I was now also stylizing the insects. 
-hmm. instead of just doing them as they were. You know? Yeah. And when do you, I see lots of color, but you also have bits of black and white. Which should you prefer? You know, at that time, I was, uh, it, was, it was a confusing time because I also preferred the very simple black and white mm -hmm. and then also a loved color at the same time. So as, 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 as I was going on, on I started to, to limit the color. And I was even I was more into simplicity, okay. you know, simplifying it, but using a little bit of color. Using just a little bit of color. Yeah. And as you simplified your work and moved away and began to focus mainly on the material and the form, what came out of that for you within this new body of work you were creating? You know, uh, I, I think I, I got tired of using color. And then, as I was saying, that uh, the, the, the man that inspired me, Simon Masino, is, is, he was based in Jobek, in Kathleen Home. So I met him in 2000, and then I was working for that company for more than seven years. And then when I got tired, I felt like, you know what, I should relocate and go somewhere where I can be close to him. And some other artists as well that were doing like you know, traditional uh, fire work. Yeah. Was, you find mostly people from KZN, from from the Bele that are doing the traditional pots, yeah. which we also were doing them in the very old days. But you know, during um, the, the relocating of people, they were from Eastern Cape to other places. Mm -hmm. So all our materials they were left there. Some they were broken, so we couldn't continue with with, the, with that with the work. So I relocated to Joburg, and then I met with him, and then I worked with him for a few months. So culturally, you would say effects of relocation, if if you had not continued to work in the way that you did, there would be a loss of that history in the process of how people make the months. Yeah, yeah, because uh, traditionally, we when we're doing traditional work, we, we, we were using traditional beer pots. Mm -hmm. But now you find that people, they would buy uh, a packet to, to, to drink from, okay. which we've lost all those uh, Talk to me a bit about the surface treatments for these, because I've not seen any colored glazes. Or... Yeah, we, we what we did was um, mostly most of my work now is basically coiled, mm -hmm. coiled, and then it's hand carved using different tools on how to carve. But I would leave spaces where I would use a uh, pebble stone to burnish. You know, I would burnish it when they're still wet, and then after that, I would burnish it uh, using cooking oil. Mm. You know, you can use any cooking oil. Yeah. You apply it when really, the pot is bone dry. Then you finish it and you get the shine. And then also, when it comes to firing, you don't fire it very high because you're going to lose that shine. Okay. And then to, 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 to get the texture of the smoke firing. But remember that people, they used, uh, they used to do pit firing, which they didn't bisque the work. They just mm. put them in the pit and then use wood to fire it and then it would be stronger. But that's traditional. That's traditional. No, traditional yeah. Fire so, fire but fire uh, fire. now when you cut kill, so I would do a, I would use a kill for a big firing, and then I would take that piece, put into a can, a steel can, and then mm -hmm. I would use newspapers, just any newspaper, mm -hmm. and then you, as, as the more you want it to be dark, the more you keep on feeding okay. newspapers, depending on how dark you want it to be. Okay. Um. Then looking at these forms. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but some of these look like the heads of, of insects. So we see that narrative and line still playing through. Yeah, you know, some of, some of my work, the, 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 the inspiration, it's, it's only vice versa. So I always revisit my old uh, inspirations. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, they, some of them, they look like uh, scorpions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, which uh, I think the insects, they always, when they get under your skin, they will never. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then from um, a cultural perspective, what is the relevance um, of insects for you? You know, the, the, the not much. I think for me, it was just love that I had from them. Mm -hmm. But we've got insects like a bee, which speaks a lot when it comes to cultural uh, things to us. Because if you see one bee in your house, it means that it's an ancestor that came to visit. Okay. But if you, you see like a, a swamp of bees, then it's, it's, you might be in trouble okay. with the ancestors. You know? So there's something that you need to do, like a traditional ceremony, mm -hmm. to talk to them. You don't just 
put a spray or a dome. We, we don't do that. Okay. You know, we consult and then, you know, people would, you know, we've got traditional uh, healers that yes. we go to, yes. to consult with them and then they would come and look at them and they would tell you what's the problem. Okay. You know, so we don't just chase them away, we welcome them. That's good to know. Yeah. Now, as your work has developed, who have you partnered and worked with that you would say has helped um, your work to continue to develop in the way that it has? You know, when I relocated to Jobek, I obviously met with Simon Masilo, but I, I, I shared a studio with Nick Sitor, mm -hmm. which he also does very traditional work, which I think is one guy that helped me a lot to mm -hmm. develop. It was also from school, I was taught how to coin. But when I met him now, he showed me new ideas on how to coin, you know. Okay. And I've also worked with uh, Kim Sex in Johannesburg, mm -hmm. which also I spent it something like uh, eight months with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, from there, I worked with uh, Southern Guild Gallery, okay. which they, they, they really took my work from this level to this other level. Um, so how long have you been working with Southern Guild? I think it's been 10 years now. A decade? Yeah. That's decade. quite nice. Yeah. So this, you, that's your stool. Uh, from what exhibition was that? Uh, it was a group exhibition. I uh, can't remember the name, but it was uh, a group exhibition mm -hmm. which is, had me, Andy, and Zizi, and uh, Nisi. Yeah. Yes, I see that rich in, the, in the middle of that image. Yeah. Um, so why, why would you say working with the Southern Guild has allowed your your work to continue to develop? You know, uh, for me, uh, when I started working, I was focused on, 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 on traditional work, mm -hmm. your ceramics, your cups, your yeah. plates. So in my mind, that was it. You know, ceramic was about that. But when I started working with Southern Guild, um, I saw myself doing furniture, as you can see, that stool. Yeah. That was my first stool that I did with them. It's called Stool of Dark. And this? These, these are two tables that I also did with them which also now, when it comes to the scale as well, mm -hmm. because I've always limited myself when it comes to scale, I'll do like very small stuff. Yeah. But when I started working with Southern Guild, they pushed me to say, sky is the limit, just push yourself, you know? And what about um, working with materials? Also working with materials, uh, 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 it was very great working with them because I'm now, I've experienced, experimented with a couple of different materials. If you can see that piece at the right hand side, that's bronze. The whole thing is bronze. The whole thing is bronze. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, also it it, it, it has been great for me to 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 be able now to 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 venture and work and with explore other materials. Other materials, yeah. That's fabulous. Now, um, tell me a bit about your cultural background and how you believe that feeds into your practice. Uh, because uh, I grew up here in Cape Town, in the city. My parents are from the rural areas, which is the Eastern Cape. You know, so we, we, we do traditional uh, works even here in the city, but we dilute them. We don't do them the same as we do them in, the, in, the, in mm -hmm. rural areas. But what I've realized uh, later that even in the rural areas, there are some elements that they don't use anymore because they don't have beer pots. They also use the packets that they buy from the shops. Mm -hmm. So with my work, what 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 was uh, important for me was to take them back to where we used to be, like to to make the pots that were traditional that we are going to keep at home that mm -hmm. we're going to use for 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 the ancestors. So we do have a short video here of you and your time here at yeah. um, the guild. If we could play that, please. So whilst this is playing, can you talk about that piece specifically? What, what is it made of? That is made out of wood. Okay. And also that's one other material I, I got to uh, experiment with, mm -hmm. which was wonderful. And it did, it, it, uh, it was a big piece that I, I, I felt like um, it's nice to see, to look at it from this point of view. <laughs> You're enjoying your own <laughs> yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. So it was an amazing uh, time to, 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 to work with that because it took me a couple of months to 
complete. Except for that together. Yeah, but it was worth it at the end. The detail was, on that yeah, is... Yeah, it was very satisfying. Also to work with the, the, the different machines, because mm -hmm. I usually work with clay, which you ju just carve and then, you know, you can add on top of it, but working with wood, if you carve and then you carve too much, it's difficult to add. You know, so it was something very tricky also for me to work with, but at the end, I I, I came up with a very successful uh, product. It's, it's yeah. absolutely stunning. Yeah, and also it relates a lot with my ceramics, because I remember on the opening of the exhibition, people, they were amazed, like, how do you fire this piece? You know, because yes. it was so huge, and uh, they were so shocked when I told them that it was made out of wood. Yeah. No, uh, when I saw it, I thought the same thing. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it even looks like leather sometimes, depending, mm. on, depending on the angle. Yeah. But yeah. So moving on from this, your current exhibition um, here at Southern Guild is pronounced equiqui. <laughs> I'm not, I haven't got the click down. I will eventually. Yeah. Please tell me a bit more about that. Yeah, Ikwekwe was a collaboration between um, the gallery and me and, and BMW. Mm -hmm. Because I was commissioned to do the BMW cover. So we had to, when we take it out, we had to combine it with something. Mm -hmm. you know, so I have made all these pieces, which now are a collaboration with the, with the, with the BMW. Um, with the works. Yeah. And I, th I find that it's really, really important at least for artists now within within the cultural climate that we that we're in and as global as things are getting that we have the opportunity or we create opportunities mm. for artists to be able to work with some of these larger global brands yeah. for, from a visibility perspective from exporting um culture and heritage yeah. to to the larger global market yeah um, and also for me to work with working with them as well it was very nice to to for for my product now to be seen moving you know instead yes. of people coming to the gallery because now that's also my product that is in the car yeah you know so yeah yeah that's also nice it. yeah um can you please talk a bit about the piece to the beer pot your yeah. your interpretation of it that uh the form mm -hmm. is, is is made to be a beer pot but if you look at it closer it got it's got three holes on it mm -hmm. so and it's titled it is doing this dually is where you know, you know when the uh, the ends they they build up the, the small houses. The hills, yes. Yeah. So that that's that's basically what is, is that inspired that. Okay. Because uh, also now because I was born here and I had to go back home to 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 sort of revisit where my parents are from, mm -hmm. and I was welcomed with warm hands. You know, so I've been going home now since I think five years back. Yeah. And I feel I feel at home. So these are the, some of the images that I would see mm. that they would inspire me. Something that I didn't grow up seeing. Because you remember, if you're in the city, the only thing that you see is paved and, 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 and yeah. streets and tar and all that. So going back home, then it was something different. For me. And, okay. and people they would look at me funny when I'm taking pictures of this studio or some yeah. some plants or some small insects. Yeah. But for me, I didn't grow up seeing those. So. Um, I particularly love this piece. You were saying that it's influenced by a rhino's horn. Yeah. And it's functional. It's functional um, because also you can take off the, as you can see, it's the same piece, but mm -hmm. you can take up off the, the lid. So okay. it's got a lid. But when you when you when it's, it's closed, I made it in, in in a way that one cannot see that it's, it's, it's two pieces. Yeah. So it's more like it's combining. You know. So that's what that's what people. I, I wanted people to to. to not to trick them, but to, to be able to see that it's, it's two pieces. And when you lift it up, you then it can surprise you. fully engage yeah. with the work to understand it. You know, so. Which is, which is absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. I can attest to the fact that when I first saw that piece, I didn't realize yeah. the top came off. Mm -hmm. um, and here we have a stool also with a little secret. Can you talk about that? Um, that one, I titled it Iskausende, which is a, a, a road spider. Mm -hmm. You know, working with BMW, we, we in, in the townships, we, we, we called BMW Mr. Sege, a road spider. That's oh. what we called it. Okay. You know, because it's, it's one of the fast cars and mm -hmm. 
you know, we can do all the swabs and all that. <laughs> so I think for me that when I did that, because also it looks like a spider. Yeah. So I just uh, tightened this up in there. And the piece next to it is called Uyatitiru um, Nga. You know, because if you look at it, it's it's more like a beer pot, but with those uh, hands. Yes. Of, and if you look at it from the top, it looks like a crab. Ah. Yeah, because it, it's got those eyes, and then, mm -hmm. especially if you look at it from the top, it's, it's, it's like a crab. And then we've got a song when we do ceremonies, which when when the ceremonies, when people are, the spirits are getting high, you know, when we enjoy mm -hmm. ceremonies, and then we sing that song, we have to do a which is, the crab is brewing a beer, you know. So it's, I've I've never tend to ask what's the meaning of the song, but you know, from for, for decades we, since I was born, so was young, we would sing that song. Yeah, we should definitely look into that as yeah. a potential new body of work. Sure. <laughs> so this is the BMW piece. Mm. Um, I see the patterns um, on it. Yeah. For you. Outside of the fact that your work is on the move and being seen mm. and having people engage with it all the time, what what else does this mean for you? What are you trying to communicate? For me, this this means that uh, uh, the possibilities are, are endless. Yeah, so anything is possible. So this is not my last collaboration with a kind of brand like this. Yeah, but uh, it was very exciting for me to do and uh, seeing my, my, my signature on that card. <laughs> it, it's very satisfying. And uh... well, It's been phenomenal uh, talking to you about this work. I think we can close this out with um, the BMW video. Okay. And we'll hear your own words. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for and the invite. For observing. Sure. It's been great talking to you and bye to everyone else out there. Bye. Thank you, Madonna. Thank you, Madonna. Thank you for um that you you are so talented, Madonna, and so lovely to see a little bit inside your mind and your passion and like you say, the sky's the limit and this is um just the beginning of big things to come so congratulations and well done also to the southern guild and um, we'll see you again at three o'clock for the next talk where i'll be in conversation talking about south african fabrics african fabric storytelling through um african design see you later